Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And I'm here in Glen Dalloc. And today we are looking at the gin distilling uh, side of the Glen Dalloc distillery. I'm still here at the upper lake and the inspiration from St. Kevin is uh, one of the inspirations that the Glen Dalloc distillery actually takes from here. But uh, the distillery is very connected here to the national park and the heritage of the, the monastery. And they have little hints on their bottle of uh, different symbolics that is here. If you come here then and you know the bottle, then you actually see something that is actually, yeah, um, some signs that are on the bottle of on the label of the bottle but it doesn't stop here the inspiration uh, with the gin is very very lively here because this is a national park and there is every wildlife that you can imagine that is grown here is actually very present and you can see it you can feel it and yeah people are forbidden to to take anything from it so um, you can take a lot of inspirations from the uh, from the wild here and that's exactly what Glendalock wants to have they want to to um, capture the the essence of what you have in botanicals into their gin so it's very inspirational to go along and see what is blooming at what different time of the year and today we're gonna have a look and look, look a little bit more into that and find out why the Glendalock um, gin is actually what it is um, and how the taste is actually created. So I'm here at, in the forest now at Glendalock and behind me is one of the kind of base ingredients. It's not in all of the gins but it's in most of the gins. It's actually Douglas fir. We do know it a bit from the from the whiskey industry because Douglas fir is used in some equipment um, that is traditional equipment for fermenting whiskey, but that's not what we're going to look at today. Today we're going to look at the flavor that is actually here in the needles of that tree. And that is uh, kind of, yeah, a nice way because uh, usually when you have a wild gin like you have from uh, Glen de Lock, then you, you are very, very bound to the seasons. You want to have them fresh and you want to harvest them just as they grow. You don't want to, you, you have to. It's just they grow there. They have the flavors during that season. You can harvest them during the season and afterwards you have to wait for another year. This tree here grows, it's not all year round, but it grows during some seasons. So um, when you let then look at the flavor in the, uh, in the tree is uh, the younger ones a bit more fresh they have a bit of a, a flavor that's going more into lime. If you have the, the older ones from the, from the last season uh, or last year, then they go a bit more into the bitter flavors that would be more into grapefruit. So the, the good thing is when you cut one of these off, you can immediately do the quality control by just breaking it off a little bit and releasing these oils. Whoa, this is intense. Uh, Oh, and it's nice it's fresh it has that that citrusy touch to it if you'd give me that in the blind tasting i would probably say it's a lemon <laughs> but um it's it's a beautiful way and the ingredients then are collected in, in baskets here and uh, carried to the distillery and that's how they actually get the botanical ingredients for the glendalock gin so let's have a look around there's more to this, not just one botanical but yeah loads and loads of different botanicals here in the in the in the forest and we're gonna have a look at maybe one or two more of them behind me is the gorse flower that is actually now a seasonal uh, botanical that is used in the glendalock um, gin it actually is blooming nearly all year round but the flavors are just coming out in April. And what you want to have is you want to have uh, in full bloom. So these here down there, they are a bit uh, still closed. They're not ready yet. If you have them in a darker, really good uh, yellow, kind of a, a full yellow, then it's, they're ready. And the gorse flower is, uh, if you smell it, it's a very, very tropical, it, when you give it a, 
to people in a blind tasting they almost 100% say coconut and that's the beauty of it it has a, a very nice unusual touch that you wouldn't expect from from European um, flowers you would expect it from coconut trees but it's it's definitely here and they are perfect for the Glendalock um, gin what what you also do know them from is some people that are still connected with nature they they use that to dye their eggs or dye their clothes and you can do all some so sort sorts of stuff with them what is uh, also very interesting is if you eat them they taste a lot different than what they smell the smell is straight up coconut mm. When you eat them, much more heavier, nothing from coconut. Um, a little bit of bitterness as well. But if you if you do it in the gin, you can capture the smell. So what, what we harvest here for is the, the aromas that we can nose. And yeah, so this is a good example for um, a seasonal. This would be uh, a spring seasonal flower that would end up in a, in a spring gin. Before I start telling you how the flavors actually get out of the botanicals into the gin, I would like to tell you a little bit about the story of the gin still. It's called Kathleen and with the legend of St. Kevin, Kathleen was a woman. She was really, really a big admirer of uh, St. Kevin and she was actually wanted to seduce him and he was pure and he resisted it and she ac he actually kind of converted her to Christianity and she then became Kathleen the purest of spirits so this here is Kathleen kind of the producer of purest of spirits <laughs> and yeah so this is a gin still that uh, you have the pot what they do here is they they have uh, a a natural alcohol with 96.3% alcohol. They water down to 35%. They put in fresh botanicals. And uh, so they have yeah, juniper, coriander, and then you have the botanicals that we just found here, uh, our gauze flower. And they, they put it in. And with fresh flowers, it's, it's much more harder because uh, in, in the summertime, when you just freshly pick them, they can a little bit var have a variation and that has to be really well looked after in the distillation process. So they let them soak in overnight, so some 16 hours or something like that, and you start distilling. Stilling is done in the pot and with a rectifier. So here everything is mechanical, there is no computer attached to it. So you can uh, either use the rectifier, you can't uh, use not the rectifier, and you can open the plates for uh, purer or finer separation and what the people here actually then have to look for are really exact cuts and that's where I come back to the botanicals the botanicals really depend on also the temperature of the day and and how the the plant is actually yeah harvested and and it varies a little bit so as it is a wild product it's a natural product and they have a bit of variation so the, really the, the point here of where you do your cuts for your, your, your centerpiece and the heads and the tails, especially the tails, they have to be looked after really carefully. So what they do here is they, they can't really have cutting points because it's dependent not on the alcohol, but on the botanicals. So what they do is they do it by sensory. It's really hard to do and they had a bit of a a phase where they had to find out what is uh, how they can do it but now they're running on a really they have the experience now and they can do a really good product at the beginning um, they only did seasonal products and they still do seasonal products because they have again fresh botanicals can only be harvested at the season they are growing or the the bloom where the the flavors are just right so we currently are on spring season, so we're doing a spring gin and then you distill the spring gin and afterwards they, they test it out how can you actually marry these gins together to get like a gin that you have for the whole year. So their, their core product is now a gin 
for the whole year. But you can still get the kind of the ingredients from the seasons to um, see what a different season tastes like, which is really a beauty. So you could technically you could also do the blending yourself where you have the different seasons and make your own little um, marriage of these um, of these different gins and yeah I really like that so this is a basic overview the, these people here at the distillery know much more about it and go even in much more detail but uh, we're gonna have a little try and a little taste of what we're gonna have here for the gin so this was it with the production and now we're having some of the lovely gin and a little interview. So I'm sitting here with Rowdy Rooney and Geraldine Cavanaugh. So you're the hat distiller and you're the botanical forger. Thank you very much for having us here at the distillery. It's our pleasure. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming. Yeah, and thank you for showing us everything uh, that I've learned today. It's just amazing knowledge and I, I really take pleasure in, in, in what we've had and I'm really looking forward for the product. So my first question for you, Geraldine, would be, um, I've seen so many amazing tastes and aromas today. If you have something that you have just a, like, I was amazed with the um, gorse flower, that you have something that with a coconut flavor in one of like our northern, western woods, and it was so coconut. And when you tasted it, it was more robust and more like, like a little bit bittersweet as well. How does that affect in the gin or how do you collect that? Do you, how, how do you, how is that, that job is just amazing for me. Well, <clears throat> when you're creating this kind of gin, you're, we're working with a lot of different ingredients mm -hmm. um, in season at different times. And you usually have like an idea of, of what you're trying to make. Like what we're often trying to do is express the garden of Ireland, which Wicklow is called in the bottle. So you're out in the wilds and you're, smelling all these different flavors and then you're thinking how 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 can i put these all together and how can i um keep juniper because it's gin mm -hmm. as the central ingredient and how how like if i want to use one botanical and i think it's not going to go well with this but then if i add this it's gonna it's gonna work out so all of our gins have a lot of ingredients um the wild botanical gin has about 36 different ingredients oh okay um, so it's a whole kaleidoscope of flavor so then when you taste each of the gins it's like a little journey because you have a, a interesting nose interesting flavors on your palate a really interesting finish with lots of flavors that people just aren't really used to so um something like gorse that has a, a very nice nose but maybe doesn't have a really strong flavor the still is going to capture that um that smell that scent in in the still mm -hmm. so you're not just thinking about the taste but you're thinking about how does it smell and how does it all work together and how do you how do you put it together to represent a place and a time yeah that? it's it's amazing that you're thinking about uh you're already thinking about a combination mm. i was thought you know, you, you pick one and it's like addition but mm. it's probably more of a there's never just one ingredient. <laughs> yeah, so, it's not possible. And even if someone said, make a gin out of gorse, of course I'm going to put something else in there to, to, to balance that out. I'm not mm. going to just put gorse in because it's not going to work, but I'm going to put something else in that's going to bring out the flavor of the gorse. So, yeah, it's just yeah. so lovely with, with the gorse and what we have, the, uh, the Douglas fir. I, I just loved it to have them on my, on my hands. Mm. You're a very good forager. <laughs> oh, thanks. You learn straight away. So if you want to change jobs, <laughs> oh, no, no, I actually love. <laughs> so um, should we start with a with a wild gin then? Sure. Sure. Mm, so slanche, slanche. Oh. Such a lovely perfume. Oh, <laughs> this is this is wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a lot in there. Isn't there? Mm. So what we tried to do was we tried to, when you're tasting and, and smelling this gin, you're tasting mm -hmm. through the four seasons. So we, we're using things like the Douglas fir and the sorrel and the mm -hmm. greens that I showed you. Gives it a spring like nose, mm -hmm. a fresh no, nose of spring with the, those green notes and the pine. I have to say it's, it's a bit overwhelming for me mm -hmm. that like you can't really find out. Okay, you can see, uh, can feel the juniper mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of that Douglas fir, but mm. I can't really pick out anything <laughs> specifically no. that I had with you on the... Oh. Of course, it was key mm. when making a, a, a gin, you know, it's got to 
Juniper has got to be the dominant taste. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't trying to create a, you know, a, a spirit of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of Glendalough. It was a gin mm -hmm. that captured the flavor of the, the mm -hmm. Wicklow Mountains. On the, but gin uh, still is, it's far away from a gin that from, you would know from a, classic from a, dry gin, a yeah. normal <laughs> gin. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mm. So, um, as you, you started off pretty small, and so is it when you? I just imagine you you going out with your baskets and you are collecting something. Is it scalable? If I mean, this is a really good product, and I think you have a, a good curve ahead of you. Mm. Is it scalable? Can you get well, enough botanicals? Yes, we can. Um, it was good. It was good to start off making just a very small amount because it allows you to hone your skills and to get everything right, and then. The, the growth was, you know, slow and gradual over the nine years that we've been making this gin. So in the beginning, there were a couple of ingredients that we were using. And mm -hmm. It was fine to use them. But then as we scaled up, I thought we can't use those anymore because it wouldn't be right to pick, mm -hmm. say, lots of primroses because you just you pick too many. So I took some of those ingredients out. But all of the things that we use now, all of the botanicals we use are abundant, as you saw today. Like mm -hmm. There's no end, of course. And heather and blueberries and fur like this you what we would pick would be wouldn't even be noticed you know and how i pick also like i pick with the scissors i don't pull up the roots of plants i move around to different places i don't take everything off one plant so i'm able to go back like i've been foraging for say wild mint the mint that i showed you mm -hmm. in the river for for many many years and it's only getting better because I always harvest with my scissors like you would in the garden mm -hmm. and do it sustainably. So everywhere I go, I can go back there every year and it's only getting better. But we will, um, there will be a few ingredients as we continue to grow that mm -hmm. will be difficult to harvest because the time scale is short. Like elderflower is a key botanical in this and it gives that lovely, mm -hmm. the lovely uh, floral summer notes in there. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to get what we need over six weeks and it can only be picked on a a dry sunny day so we are <clears throat> going to have some of our own land where we're going to plant elderflower and just allow that to rewild but it'll be one location where I can go to and just pick all my elderflower there so but a lot of the other botanicals you just wouldn't grow them because they're just so abundant and there's yeah. just no point I've, I've actually when we drove from <laughs> where we foraged to here uh, we actually are a bit sensitized from you and we just saw like yeah this course is Everywhere. everywhere it's just I, oh there's yeah. another yellow plant another yellow plant okay yeah. they're everywhere they're yeah. really abundant so you really could no matter how much you pick you have no impact with that and some of the plants like it actually the landscape benefits from from me picking gorse mm -hmm. because you don't want gorse to spread on your land because it takes over from some other plants so we're actually doing a good job by picking yeah. it so Okay. If you spend a day with Geraldine, you'll never look at a hedgerow again, the same again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, yeah, we've already had a bit of that experience, but yeah. it's it's amazing what, what nature really is offering you. And you usually, uh, for some people, it's just, yeah, it's a tree, green, brown, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it. Oh, but, can, can you eat it? <laughs> Even my children say when they see plants, can you eat them? That's the first thing. <laughs> no, we're so lucky. Yeah. We're so lucky where we're yeah. located, yeah. yeah. So, but I have to say that when you... When you look at it from a, from a production standpoint, um, did you know what you get yourself into when you said, yeah, wild and fresh? <laughs> um, well, I guess I was, I was lucky enough that um, this was, I started my uh, distilling career here mm -hmm. with Glendalock, so um, I learned how to distill using fresh and wild botanicals. Um, I was... I was doing it for quite some time before mm -hmm. I realized this is actually the really difficult way to do things, <laughs> uh, but it was too late to go back at that stage. Um, so I guess, yeah, I learned the hard way, so I didn't know any better at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is, when you have good ingredients, you get a good outcome, but the thing is, when, when you want to sell it, then people want con continuity, and I think that's the difficult part, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, to a certain extent, my, uh, you know... My, my job's the easy bit. Uh, uh, Geraldine produces uh, 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 and brings in these amazing fresh botanicals, and, and mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, my job is just to not make a mess of them. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's um, it's enjoyable, and it's mm -hmm. it's uh, 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 it was a challenge to try and get it right at the beginning, mm -hmm. and to to move from our 
original uh, seasonal gin recipes to try and develop the, the, the recipe for this wild botanical gin. Took quite some time and quite a little bit of playing around and tweaking, but... Um, yeah, recipe-wise, I think that's, that's difficult. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know what? It was you know it, it it was a fun process. It's not it was challenging, but it wasn't. Um, yeah, but it I didn't have it, it. It had its upsides. Yeah, but I think don't think you're at the end. I think there there will be more stuff coming. <laughs> There's we, always more stuff. Yeah, coming. Yeah, we've got some um, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. some some a di few different experiments going, and we we'll, we we'll, we will hope to we'll hope to release another gin um, at some point in the hopefully in the near future, but. But it won't be, I don't know what it's going to be yet. We don't know what it's going to be yet. And it, will, it won't be released until we yeah. get that, oh, yes, we've got it moment. Yes, and the that's thing it. is, I do love it that with gin, you have also, like with whiskey, you have a lot of variety. Because uh, of your ingredients, you have just so many ingredients mm. to choose from. It's, it's amazing. So the next one is a bit of a, a special one. It's, uh, how, how is it called? It's, it's rose, it's uh, the rose, ro rose gin, yeah. The rose gin. So yeah. they actually, that, that's the one where you put the roses in the, uh, what, what do you call it? In, in, the, in the vapor basket, yeah, vapor the vapor basket. trays. Um, yeah, like, <laughs> I guess like everything that we do here, it, it, it's slightly more complicated than that, and that some of the, some, some of the roses are, uh, go into the pot, some of them are, uh, go into the vapor tray, and some of them uh, are actually fresh, roses from my late mother's garden whose name was rose and uh, this is a very personal gin to me the story um how it, okay. how it came about was um shortly after my mother passed away we, and we were very close we were like mates as well as uh, mother and son um my younger brother was getting married um oh. So we decided that we'd make a batch of gin specifically for his wedding that we could give to the guests to toast his wedding. And I, I came up with the idea to um, grab some roses from mom's garden. So, so get roses from Rosie's garden to bring them and we'll put them into the gin as well so that she can't be with us on the day, but she can be with us in spirit, as it were. <laughs> in spirit. So, <laughs> so literally in spirit. And um, as, I, as I was distilling the batch, of, they came down, um, they brought some roses down and, 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 and Paco, my, my, my brother Paco and his now wife Gina went foraging with uh, Geraldine for the day and they came back and we used the fresh roses from mom's garden. I told them just go and take them all, after the, there's a plant outside the back door that's the most amazing rose smell in the world and you know, my dad wasn't even going to notice that the flowers were gone <laughs> off the plant. Um, so he brought them all down and as we distilled the next day I could get this different smell as the uh, just before the just before the head started to flow and it's uh, you know you get used to all the sounds and smells of the still it was like hang on that's different and different is alarming at times because you don't <laughs> what, what's wrong what's wrong and it's like then it was like hang on that's that's the smell of the roses from mom's garden so uh, starting yeah. to come through immediately and it was like I was really surprised but mm -hmm. it went down a treat at the wedding and mm -hmm. we just decided you know what that's that's, a that's good story. enough to scale up, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's nice. It's nice when I can walk into a bar, and I see a bottle behind the, 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 the on the back bar. It's like, hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> that's that's a kind, reminder. Kind yeah. of nice, yeah. But it was, we tried to make it. Ooh. It was it was again difficult to do because it's too easy to with rose. You know, it's very easy to get in get into a you know soapy over perfumed mm -hmm. i didn't want to make a pink gin that was highly confected mm -hmm. you know that was that false sweetness like everything we do here is all natural mm -hmm. all natural ingredients and flavors so it was it was really important to to try and get the that um that nice scent of rose sort of almost um turkish delighty kind of taste and flavor through without going into mm. rose water sort of soapy kind of flavor mm -hmm. um, it so has a, a bit of a velvety touch to it yeah it's um most most often the the feedback we get is yeah turkish delight that sort of almost mm -hmm. chocolate rose yeah i like it i really like it thank you cheers slant you hmm Mm. Oh, that's smooth. Oh. Mm. Mm. 
I like it. That's it's really has a nice texture to it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's it's a, a bit of a bit of a fresh note as well, but a lot of from the roses, and yeah. Mm. Bit of that tingling from the juniper, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and there's a, a, a slight sweetness to it, but without that, um, mm. without that artificial sweet. It's a natural sweetness that comes from the, from the flowers. Um. Yeah, I would, I would have been afraid. I was a little afraid when you look at the color, and then you think, and I had some of uh, other gins, let's say that way. <laughs> I can be like, okay, this is definitely not a dry gin. <laughs> I've so enjoyed, um, I've so enjoyed at, at tastings and whatever, when you try to people, would you like to try a rose gin? No, I don't like pink gin. And it's like, oh great, because this is not a pink gin, this is a rose gin, it just happens to be pink. Mm. And when you get people who, who are, you know, they've got this preconception in their head that they, they don't like pink gin, and then they taste, and it's like, Oh, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, because yeah, they're, it's they're, they're expecting <laughs> this very sweet, um, really almost like alcohol poppy taste. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what I find really, really amazing is um, what, how you came up, the story that you, you first uh, got into the distilling and you, you actually looked at it and, okay, we are really dependent on the seasons, um, as many businesses are, and you are especially as well and uh that you you still wanted to have like one product of one like year and and you married them together as a as a liquid so uh, was that ever done before is that is that standard in the business or uh, to, to the best of our knowledge uh when we released our, our first um mm -hmm. seasonal gins of spring summer autumn winter releases that there was nobody else doing that at the mm -hmm. time and and um and I, I i don't believe also there was anybody using um predominantly fresh ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so um, I think it was, I think it was pretty um, unique to us. I think there, there are other um, brands now that have released seasonal gins as well. And mm -hmm. that, you know, that's cool. It's a, it's, it's a good thing. It's um, variety is the spice of life, as they say, but uh, yeah. yeah, it was. Um, I always love it when a startup comes with something new and just topples it. <laughs> I, I really love that. Mm -hmm. mm. And I'm really excited about how you're going into the future. So if I come back here in five years, how's it going to look? How, what are we going to have on the table? I'm, I'm really excited about that. Great. We look, forward to, we look forward to having you back. And yeah, I, I, I can't even give you a hint now because... Um, oh yeah, five years' time is a long time. We don't know. But when, when we, as I said, when we, when we get it, when we nail it down and we, we, we come up with a recipe that, yes, we'll know when we've got it right. Um, yeah. And then we'll, we'll release it then and not before. We won't put out a new gin just to put out a new gin. We're, when, when, we, when we get it right, we'll put it out there. It's the long way, not, not the, the, what was the easy way. It's the right way. <laughs> True. We do not making new drinks though. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think we've been through. So thank you very much for having us. Thank you much for sharing all these information and sharing the way you do the gin. So thank you it's for our pleasure. Yeah. So thank yeah. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you very much for watching. So um, if you like this, uh, have a look. These gins are available worldwide. Look for them. They are really amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Thank you.